Hi, welcome to another episode of Comics Review. I'm your host, Kevin Starkey. Uh, the first comic I want to talk about today is Abattoir. This is issue number one of six. That's unusual. Um, Radical hasn't had a lot recently that were that many issues in a series, so it's kind of cool. It's a little longer than most. Most have been like three. Um, and this is, the writer on this is Rob Levin and Troy Pateri, and the illustrator is Bing Cancino. And this is typical of uh, Radical's work. Uh, the, the art is amazing. It looks like paintings. Um, this one, a lot of dark, dark stuff. Um, uh, it starts off at a kid's birthday party, and then something goes really bad, and uh, then it, then the story switches to these two realtors. Well, actually, I guess I have to give away. So if you're if you're planning on reading this, you don't want to know anything about it. Um, stop listening for maybe a minute or so. Um, the, the father goes on a rampage and kills a bunch of people and um, he ends up dying and so then then this alright spoilers over um, then the story switches back to I guess it's still spoilers I'm telling you about it but you know what I mean the story switches back to these two realtors their story um, one of them is assigned the house that that family lived in uh, that was having the birthday party and he's married and he has a kid and it's tough, tough, tough economy. He's he needs to make a sale. The other guy's a single guy, and they, you know, they, they pal around a little bit at work, and um, they end up going over to the house. Um, in in the evening, there's no power, so it's kind of dark in there. They want to sort of see what's going on, see what kind of cleanup needs to be done on the house to sell it. And this weird old guy shows up, wants to buy the house. He wants to buy it right then, and they're like, "Well, we have you know these rules, and I can't just sell it to you." Um, the guy gives him his card. Uh, the next day, he tells his boss about it, about this weird guy showing up, and the and the boss says, "Hey, I've heard there is this old weird guy that buys up houses of um, families, you know, that had a problem and had to get out of the house quick." Um, and he's like, "You should sell it to this guy. You're probably not going to get another buyer." So, he gives the guy a call, and he doesn't get a hold of him. He gets home, and the guy's at his house, and he's sitting at the table with that guy's daughter. And, um, you know, you're going to see where it goes from there, but great read. Uh, the writing in this is really good. Um, I highly recommend this series, if, if, if that sounds... It's kind of creepy, kind of spooky. Um, if that sounds like something you're interested in, and this is Halloween, so maybe you are, um, definitely pick this up. I can't wait to see where they're going to go with this series. All right, the next comic is one I just saw as I was checking out. It was up by the counter. This is Incognito, Bad Influences. This uh, The writer on this is Ed Brubaker, and the artist is Sean Phillips. And I've heard a lot of about uh, Brubaker. A lot of people like him. I had never read anything by Brubaker. Um, this is a strange series. I, what I didn't know at first was that there's like a whole trade paperback out there right now that that is precedes this. And so I was a little bit lost going into it. Um, it's a strange story. I didn't like the art. It wasn't really my style. The writing, I wasn't a, a fan of. The main character in here, he sort of seems like... He's a clone or something along those lines of somebody else who had sort of been a bad guy. And there's this whole... It's a its a weird universe because these people have like... Like there's this, all these different groups. I don't know. Government agencies, SOS, and all these different things I've never heard of before. Um, and this guy almost seems indestructible or... I'm not really sure what his deal is. It was very confusing and... I felt really lost in this. Um, I didn't like the writing that much. It just wasn't my style. And the artwork was, you know, like I said, I didn't really like it. This old guy sees the main character here. I can't even think of his name. 
I didn't like it that much. Um, Mitchell. No, that's a different story. Sorry. I'm on the last one. Um, yeah, this old guy sees the main guy, and he, he recognizes him as the, his previous lifetime, which it wasn't even him. The guy had ruined his life, and he was in a coma, and then he wakes up, and he's an old man. He was young. So he goes after this guy, and the guy ends up oh, whacking him, I think. I don't know. I, I'm not going to get the next one of these. It was it was really not my thing. This is from Icon, by the way. Um, if you're a big Brubaker fan, you probably know all about this series, and you're probably psyched to get this one. I, I wasn't really that into it, but um, sorry about that. Uh, the next one... I want to review is uh, Victorian Undead. This is a special. Sherlock Holmes versus Jekyll and Hyde. This is from Wildstorm Comics. The um, the writer on this is um, Ian Edgington, and the artist is Horatio Dominguez. And at first I thought it was going to be in black and white, but it's definitely not. There's plenty of color in here. The art I really like in this one. I like the style. It's really, um, it's really a neat style. Um, basically, if you're a Sherlock Holmes fan, um, Jekyll and Hyde, anything in the Victorian time period, if you like that sort of stuff, mysteries, uh, you'll definitely like this story. There's zombies, there's all that sort of, you know, deductive reasoning of Sherlock Holmes, and Watson's in here. Um, it's just a really good story. I really like it. I like the art. Um, it's sort of a special, so it's not going to be a, an ongoing thing. Uh, the next one is going to be um, Sherlock Holmes versus Dracula. So I'll probably, no, I'll definitely be picking that one up. Um, if that's sort of your thing, um, check it out. I really liked it. It's a lot of fun. The last comic I want to talk about today is Prince of Persia. This is number four of four. I uh, had reviewed this previously when I um, picked up the first issue. And I'm not a Prince of Persia fan by any stretch. Um, I've never played the games. I, I didn't see the movie. Um, I just sort of picked it up on a whim. And um, I actually enjoyed the first one a lot. Uh, it reminded me a little bit of, like, uh, Aladdin, which I'm not a huge Aladdin fan either, but some similar things. Um, a, a prince and, a, you know, that sort of stuff. But the story starts out this this guy, he's like a government official. I guess he's like a governor or something of this little area. He gets this whole mob of people, and um, he's basically going to execute them. He thinks one of, some of them stole something, and he, he thinks they're all up to some bad stuff. They begin to tell this guy some stories to try to convince him not to kill them, to let them go, that they're innocent of any crimes. And um, each person tells a story, you know, one after the other. And he's not convinced by any of them. And by this issue, they're on the last couple of stories. And there's some really good stories in this one. This one, I like the stories a lot better than any of the others. And the artwork's really, really neat. Um, neat colors. And um, then in the end, I wasn't... I, I didn't like the ending. Um, it was okay. Um, I thought maybe by the end, they would be able to convince this guy... And it went a little different than I expected, and I, I just wasn't thrilled with the ending. It was okay. Um, I would still just, I would say, you know, if, if this is something you might be interested in, pick it up because it is good, and you might like the ending. It, it, it was okay. It just wasn't my thing. All right, that's it for this week. Um, please leave a comment here on YouTube or over on my blog at 2dognight.net and let me know what you're reading this week. Um, are you reading anything I've reviewed? And um, I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.